Welcome back to Let the Quran Speak. Now Muslims believe that the Quran is word of God and we're here to prove it. Now by the way, we've been going through this for the past few weeks. We've gone through a list of 10 reasons. We're up to number 7 now. Now you've, you've called this the numerical miracles of the Quran. We've discussed this in the past. But what exactly do you mean uh, as an overview by numerical miracles of the Quran? What we mean is that uh, when we study the Quran now, we realize that uh, things are arranged in the Quran. Uh, forget for a moment about its actual message and teaching. But if we look at the actual arrangement, the way verses are put together, the number of words, number of letters in a verse, uh, the number of chapters, the number of verses within each chapter, the number of times certain words are used in the Quran. All of these show that there is a kind of a, a guiding principle, a divine mind behind the Quran, mm -hmm. something over and above the human minds that were working uh, on the book. Things which we are now dis discovering that could not have been known to the human beings who worked with the Quran over its history. And uh, that, to me, is a very strong um, evidence uh, pointing to the Quran's divine origin. So basically the claim we're making here is that the, the association, the number of associations that we will show today could not possibly have been figured out by a person in that time and of course would the arrangement have a proper message as well? Yeah, it's not so much that people could not have uh, figured these things out because people, of course, were quite brilliant in their mathematicians uh, prior to Jesus and prior to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them. Uh, but what we mean is that knowing the history of the Quran, knowing how it was put together, we know that the human minds that actually worked on the Quran were not privy to the information which uh, now is available about the arrangement of the text uh, of the Quran itself. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this takes us into uh, dealing with the mathematics of probability. And although I find this to be one of the strongest proofs for, for the Quran's divine origin, I also have found that this is one of the most difficult points to convey to people because of the complexity uh, of, of the numerical arrangements. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we are to break things down into a very simple sort of description, uh, we, we know that if you uh, spin a coin, uh, the probability of getting heads is one out of two because there are two possibilities. You can come up heads, you can come up tails. Mm -hmm. To get heads uh, is one out of two uh, mm -hmm. or 50%. If we roll one uh, dice, then the probability of getting the six on it uh, would be one out of six because there are six different faces and we need just one. Mm -hmm. um, but if we roll two die together, then uh, the probability of getting 6 on both is actually 1 out of 36 because there are 36 different possibilities that can come up. You can get a 1 on 1 and a 6 on the other, 2 on 1, 6 on the other, 3 on 1, 6 on the other, and so on, and then the reverse. So there are 36 different arrangements you can have with the two die, and you just want one possibility, meaning both have to have sixes. Yeah. Uh, so the, the possibility of getting that desired result is 1 out of 36. Now, if you have three die t t together and you roll them, then the possibility of getting a six on all of them is one out of 36 times one out of six. It's actually one out of 216. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, you, as we introduce more complexity into the operation, to get the one desired result actually is eventually becomes nearly uh, difficult to conceive. Mm -hmm. What we're finding with the Quran, on the other hand, is that people work together in collecting the Quran, learning it from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, verbally at first, and then writing it down, compiling the written pieces, going around, checking with everyone who knew it from the Prophet, peace be upon him. People are concerned with the message itself, mm -hmm. and they're concerned to get the words correctly, just as it was heard. Mm -hmm. This was all written down. Then eventually people started to number things, mm -hmm. number the verses. Now we know that there are 114 chapters in the entire Quran. Now we know how many verses are in each chapter because eventually people numbered things. Mm -hmm. So the numbering of things actually came later. First you have the text, and now people are trying to count things. It's when we count things now that we realize that these counts, first of all, were not known to the ancient, to the ancient persons who worked on the Quran. And second, these counts show an arrangement which, like our three dice is all coming out sixes in a row, uh, that, that would have been difficult to imagine as coming by mere chance. Mm -hmm. It looks like if you roll three dice, 
and say, look, I got three dice, I'm going to roll them and, and get six on all of them. You throw them, and they're all sixes. Somebody will think you fixed it. Mm -hmm. So in, in the same way, when we look at the Quran and we see the arrangement, it looks like somebody has fixed something. Mm -hmm. And it's not the human beings who worked on it because nobody had a clue about this. Let, let me give you an example. So we know there are 114 chapters. Mm -hmm. Each chapter has a certain number of verses. And uh, scholars have been bewildered to find out uh, what is the secret behind the arrangement of the Quran. Why do you have the longest chapters first and shortest chapters at the end? And why is it that you don't have a consistent progression or rather a, a, a reduction in, in the numbering of verses? You have 286 verses in the f second chapter, but only seven verses in the first. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a small number, a large number. It, it goes down a little bit. Sometimes the number jumps up. Sometimes it goes lower and so on. Mm -hmm. what, it ha what has been found is that if you were to take the uh, summation, of each chapter number with the number of verses within the chapter, obviously we get 114 results because there are 114 chapters. Mm -hmm. These results would even, either be even numbers or odd numbers, naturally, because that's how numbers fall. But what is interesting is that if you separate these results, the even numbers on one hand and the odd numbers on, on the other hand, interestingly enough, you get 57 numbers on each side. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason why, just simply from the point of view of mathematics or from the properties of numbers, this result should have been like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, why didn't you have 59 uh, even numbers and uh, 57 odd numbers, for example? Uh, why, why is it 57 and, and 57? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, uh, equally balanced. Yeah. What is more interesting is that if you take the even numbers, the 57 even number results here, and you add them all up, you get the grand total of 6,236. Mm -hmm. Now, 6,236, this is the number obtained from 57 chapters, but that is also the total number of verses in the entire Quran. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the odd number results? Uh, if you were to add up all of the 57 odd number results, which again were obtained for only 50, from only 57 chapters, the grand total is 6,555. Mm -hmm. But 6,555 is also the total of all of the chapter numbers in the entire Quran. Mm -hmm. So here you have a, a, a double coincidence uh, involving large numbers. And when you're dealing with such large numbers, and you're dealing with a double coincidence like this, you can no longer call it a coincidence. It, it must be there by a plan. Mm -hmm. And obviously this was a divine plan because no human being ever described this prior to our present times when we can just simply feed the things into a computer. Nowadays it's easy. Anyone can open up the Quran. He can open up something like a Microsoft uh, Excel word, uh, worksheet program. He can, in one column, list all of the chapter numbers in the Quran. In the second column, he can list all of the total number, all of the verses in each chapter. Mm -hmm. Then he can add them across. He will get 114 results. He can separate the results, even numbers in one column, odd numbers in the other column. And then he can take the totals in those two columns. And he will find that the total in his even number column is the same as the total verses in the entire Quran. Mm -hmm. And the total in his odd number column is the same as the total uh, of the chapter numbers in the entire Quran. Mm -hmm. So how does such a double coincidence occur? Not by coincidence, but by a deliberate plan. Mm -hmm. And since it was not by any human plan, we have here good evidence that the Quran is given to us by a divine mind. Thank you, Brother Shemir. Welcome. As I understand, we have even more of these mathematical miracles from the Qur'an, but we will get into them next week. For now, we'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Please, stay tuned.